What's going on everybody, Joshua Wade here, and as you can see, I am recording audio a little bit differently today for the video. This is the Antelope Audio Edge Solo Modeling Microphone, and they were kind enough to send this to me after I bought the Zen Q Thunderbolt. They have a promotion going on until the 30th of this month. If you buy the Zen Q, either the Thunderbolt or the USB, they send you one of these and they give you a bunch of free plugins. For the record, this is not sponsored. I just felt like doing a review on this microphone because I recorded a song with it and I honestly was really blown away by the quality of it. I Honestly, I thought it was a gimmick, right? Like they're just gonna give you this microphone. Hey, buy our interface. I already wanted the interface. So the microphone and the plugins were a bonus for me, obviously. I love gear, so why not do a review on it after I recorded my song with it, a song. I was so amazed by it that I wanted to do a video, and this is recording dry. This is no modeling on it. It's got a bunch of different modeling mics. We'll go over that a little bit later in the video. So I wanted to go over some pros and cons and the benefits, and do I think it's worth it toward the end of this video? The first thing that I'm gonna tell you about is if you're looking at buying one of these microphones, iLock is not required if you have an Antelope Audio interface and you only want to model the microphone going into your DAW from said interface, okay? When you buy this microphone, if you have an Antelope Audio interface, they will give you, the, you can type in the serial number, you can register it, and your interface acts kind of like an iLock in a sense that you can pull up the amp modeling inside of their, their mix view, their mixer that they have, you can pull the amp sim or the mic sims up inside of the mixer, but if you don't have an eye lock and you try to pull them up inside of your DAW, it's going to toggle you for an eye lock. So that's the downside of it. And if you don't have another downside, if you don't have an interface, you're going to need an eye lock. Period. So if you're looking at just getting this microphone and you don't have one of their interfaces you're gonna need an eye lock, so just be ready for that. The next topic I wanna to kinda of touch on a little bit is who do I think this microphone is for? Okay, so me personally, using this microphone for the past song and a couple of sessions that I've done, I think this microphone is for somebody who is maybe looking to expand their, their home studio a little bit and they maybe can't afford a big mic locker or something like that, this microphone will get you three quarters of the way there as far as a, a mic locker goes. This thing is pretty cool and I've tested some of the different models. I've tested, they've got a Sony C800 model on here. Uh, they've got a Neumann U87 on here. If you're somebody like me, I work with rappers, I work with country singers, I work with pop musicians. It's really cool to pull up the mic modeling plugin that they have on the mix and just change it according to what sounds best for the singer at the time. Now I had mentioned I have to do that in real time because I don't have an eye lock so I can't pull it up after the fact inside of my mix. So I have to do it on the mixer view and I have to kind of dedicate to that. But it doesn't that doesn't bother me. I don't mind dedicating to a microphone, especially if I find one that fits the singer really well. I'm just gonna save it as a preset like hey this is so and so's microphone. Sounds the best on them. And that I'm okay with doing that. All right guys, so here we are inside of the mix view and try not to make a mistake like me, and these are peaking because I just did a audio sync clap real quick. Try not to make a mistake like me. Whenever you click this microphone, this is how you engage your mic models, right? So I've got the edge solo, so we'll put it up to the edge solo. What you don't hear is a difference, and I thought, well, that's because it's the edge solo, right? Well, if you select any other microphone, you won't hear a difference either. And that's because you have to do this. You have to go over here to where it says preamp. You have to click the emulation mic and see there it is. It'll tell you edge solo. And what's really cool is you notice I have two that are XLRs here, but if you had more, like if I had a bigger um, interface, it would tell you what mic you were modeling on each track. So go to this, select the edge solo now the emulation is working. Obviously it didn't change because I'm still on the edge solo uh, mic model. But if I go into here, we'll start at the top, the Tokyo 800. So now you can hear it's a little bit different. You hear it's got more of a presence in the highs. It's got that kind of C800 kind of vibe to it. And let's go back to the Edge Solo and there's the Edge Solo. So let's go to the Tokyo 800 and there's the Tokyo 800. So I'm basically, I'm just going to go through this list. I'm not going to tell you the name of every microphone because to be quite honest with you, I don't really know half of what they are. So <laughs> I know more of the more popular ones. Okay, so there's Ed Solo, the Berlin 47. So that's a 47 FET, I would imagine. So there's what that one sounds like. And this is obviously more of a voiceover test because I, I don't have any singers or anything like that lined up for this. This was kind of a last minute thing. And that would be a U67, I would imagine. So here's what a U67 sounds like. And that's got a 
a bit of a bottom end. I would recommend you listen to this through your studio monitors or through a set of headphones because your phone, you're not going to be able to hear the difference. They're very, very subtle. So the Berlin 87, that would be the Neumann U87, I'd imagine. And that did change a little bit, didn't it? So here's the U87, and let's go back to the 67. Again, these are super, super subtle, guys. So the M103, so there's a one. There's a 103, so I'm guessing that's a TLM 103. So that's what that one sounds like, the 49T. Here's what the 49T sounds like, and I can hear the difference. I don't know if you guys can. Again, if you're not rocking uh, headphones or inside of your studio monitors, you're probably not going to notice the difference. And the Berlin 57, let's go to that one. So, all right, so that's kind of a flatter, kind of a flatter sound. Um, let me see here. Oh, this one, yes, the Vienna 12. So that's a C12. Oh, yeah, that's definitely got a different tone to it, huh? That's kind of like, um, I don't even know what to call that. That's like a scooped mids maybe, and there's a presence in the highs. The 414, so that's a 414. And that sounds, yeah, sounds like a 414 to me. And I've only got, if you see, I've only got the windsock on this thing, so I don't have a pop built or anything like that on it. Um, so it, it's going to change the tone a little bit, but just base this off a of comparison between each model. Uh, let me see here. So we got the Berlin V563. So, and this is uh, going to be on the ladder of one of the ones I don't know what it is. And I'm ashamed to admit that I don't know what these microphones are because I'm sure they were, they were modeled after legendary mics. So the Illinois 57, we already know what that one is. Um, and that's, I mean, I don't even have a 57 here to compare it to. I don't own a 57, believe it or not, because I don't close mic amps too much or drums too much. Uh, 7B, let's see what that, oh yeah. Okay, so there's like a definite... Definite boost in the lows on that one. You can hear that. Holy cow. Yeah, so that definitely has that 7B sound. The Minnesota 20. Sorry if you're from Minnesota. I didn't mean to make it sound like that. <laughs> oh, we know what that one is. I mean, I can't tell you the name, but I've seen it in a lot of uh, podcast studios and stuff, so that's kind of comparable. Oh, that one does sound good, though, doesn't it? It doesn't have too much. If we go back to the 7B, 7B has, yeah, a lot of bottom end on it. And again, I'm not EQing these guys. This is just straight up just how the how they sound check that out oh yeah that's that's pretty good too all right so uh the vienna 112 okay so this one you see a lot the 112 you see a lot they use them for kick drums and stuff like that um i mean you can use a microphone for anything you want to use it for right uh see the k86 a berlin k86 i have no idea what that is uh, but this is what it sounds like according to uh antelope audio <laughs> so then the berlin 47 tu this is what that one sounds like. Oh, that's got a lot, a lot of, uh, that's got a lot of presence to it. Yeah, that's that sounds pretty good actually. I see in the Berlin M two fifty ah the two fifty one. Yes, there we go. My first video on this was an unboxing of the Warm Audio WA two fifty one, and that microphone was really cool. It just didn't sound good on everything, but it sounded amazing on a couple things, if that makes sense. On vocals, obviously, but it, I couldn't throw it on certain vocalists because it just sounded too harsh and I don't know, but it's, hey, now I have a model of it, so that's pretty cool. Then the Hamburg 441, and that, oh, okay, cool, very cool. So those are all the microphones, so let's go back to the Edge Solo. So here is the Edge Solo, and honestly, guys, that sounds, it sounds fine the way it is, and you can, you, you can invert the phase of it, obviously, um, so I'm just going to turn this off, and that's how you turn, that's your modeling off. Now you see I turned it off. It doesn't show anything. So it's really cool. It's really cool how they do it. So if I go back into it, if I turn it back on and then I select, let's say the Berlin, the U, the 87, right? Now see, it says right there, the Berlin 87. And again, it's so cool. You can select two and you can have like a C800 here and it'll tell you it's a C800 or you can have the 87 up here and it'll tell you. So that's, that's pretty nifty. I like that. So now I'm going to switch over to a test that has nothing to do with anything, but it's something that it's a microphone that a lot of us own. So I wanted to make it anyway. So here it is. So here we are on the Rode NT1 and the Edge Solo. And why would I compare a Rode NT1 to the Edge Solo when the price is about double for the Edge Solo? Well, the way that I look at it, guys, everybody has either owned this microphone or probably still has one laying around. And not to mention, this is one of my favorite inexpensive microphones still to this day i still use it for a lot of stuff so i figured that would be kind of a base for comparison for anybody who maybe has one or has used one these both are running into my zen q interface both are 
handling no processing right now. I've got no compression and I didn't put a pop filter or windscreen on it. That's why I'm about eight to 10 inches away from it. I wanted you guys to hear the just totally dry, direct tone with no pop filter in the way. So I'm sorry if any plosives hit it. I'm trying to kind of talk this way a little bit. The capsules are as close as I can get them to each other without actually touching. And I can see them. They're lined up. They're pretty, pretty well centered to each other. So this is the sound. And I would have been switching back and forth from the Zen Q to the Rode NT1. And yeah, this is a kind of a, a tester for you guys if you're thinking about maybe upgrading from the Rode NT1 to this one. So if you guys have seen my gear reviews before, you know that I like to come out with pros and cons, and I'll usually start with the cons just to kind of get the bad out of the way. So one of the main cons for me is the iLock situation. I touched on it a little bit earlier in the video. I think iLock is so archaic and just outdated. It's a stupid protocol. I can't stand it. Having said that, a lot of people still use it. Why? I don't know but Antelope Audio is one of those people. And another con is just kind of me being a little bit petty, but not really because this is, again, you know, a $600 to $650 microphone. Actually, I think it's six. It's $595 or something like that. I'll put it on the screen now. It doesn't come with a shock mount. A $600 microphone doesn't come with a shock mount. That irritates me a lot because there are a lot of microphones out there that come with shock mounts, and they're half the price of this thing, well, less than half the price of this thing, and they come with a shock mount. On to the pros. Uh, two pros also. Uh, pro number one is the sound quality, which is the most important thing, right? I always add that as a number one pro. This microphone, without any modeling on it, sounds absolutely amazing. Quick story. I recorded one of my songs, one of my personal songs, on this microphone. I thought I was using the Sony C800. User error. I made a mistake. I wasn't using it at all. I was still blown away by the sound and I didn't find out until after I had tracked the whole song that it was just the bare microphone. It was just this microphone that I was using and it still sounded amazing. I didn't go back and re-record it. I didn't have to because it sounded fine the way it was. Pro number two, because I only got two cons and two pros on this one, is the build quality on this thing. This thing is built like a tank. This is something that I would feel absolutely comfortable going to another studio, throwing this thing on a drum set in front of an amp. Uh, using it as overhead and it could probably take a couple falls and probably wouldn't hurt it at all because and actually I just touched it so <laughs> sorry about that but it could probably take a couple falls and and still go because this thing is is built like a tank it really is so the build quality is, is absolutely stellar on this thing so the end of the video would I recommend this microphone um yes yes I would if you're looking to expand your mic locker this is a great addition to that if you're somebody like me I've used the Rode NT1 for years and I still love that microphone but this is pretty much going to replace it on a lot of my sessions if not all of them I'm still kind of upset about the lack of shock mount for $600 come on antelope you guys can throw in a shock mount now you do give us a nice case but I would almost trade off a not so nice case for a shock mount. Uh, but other than that, that's kind of my only complaint about it. The eye lock thing doesn't even really bother me a whole lot. Um, I just really wish you guys would give us a shock mount. So that's gonna do it for me on this video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, continued support is greatly appreciated. You don't only have to subscribe if you don't want to. Just hit that little thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It, it, sh it sends more people my way to watch my videos, so. <laughs> uh, anyway, remember guys, it's called music theory, not music fact. See you later.